Right now, I'll be sharing with you guys the three biggest chess lessons I've learned in the year of 2021. Because all my OG subscribers know that Phil never had a great chest. And it's only this year, I'd say, that my chest has really been picking up. I can notice it more. You guys give me more good feedback on it. And I could definitely feel it a lot more than I used to because I was following more of a minimalist approach. And through trial and error, I've learned what works for me and what didn't. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys exactly that in my video. So... So now we're gonna talk about benching variations. So I'm actually a huge advocate of dumbbell benching. And the reason why is because one of the functions of the chest is horizontal adduction. And you can get that function with dumbbell pressing because it has more of a dumbbell fly effect as opposed to when you use a barbell and your hands are fixed in the pronated position. So I like that. And I wanna give a huge shout out to Bells of Steel because they dropped the arch nemesis bar. And this is basically a Swiss bar that has an arch on it, so you get a deeper stretch in your pecs. So it basically feels like a dumbbell bench, but it takes the stability out of the movement. So when you're using dumbbells, it's very shaky at times when you start grinding out heavier reps, which when you start getting to those last couple reps. And dumbbells are not bad. I still use dumbbells myself, but I've been using and I've been incorporating the bar you see in back of me. And if you use a regular Swiss bar, it's not that it's bad, but there is more stability required and you can't go as deep. So I feel like from a chest hypertrophy standpoint, this bar is definitely not mandatory by any means, but you know, I got a good price on it. If you guys want to see a full review on this bar, I could definitely do that as well, but I'm just going to show you guys a set of this exercise. So you guys can also notice I'm using roughly a 10 degree, 10 to 15 degree incline. So right below the bench, got this from Eugene Teo. I know I'm using a, I'm taking a lot of stuff from different people today, but this personally just feels better on my shoulders. I know guys like Dorian Yates, you know, old school bodybuilders in the past said the same thing, but I personally feel a better stretch on my chest when I use very slight inclines and very slight declines, hence why I was using a slight decline in the Instagram workout video I just posted. So if you come around, you'll see. Got this nice line in the middle. This helps you track the middle of the chest. And it's also a cable attachment as well. You can use this handle, closer grip, if you want more triceps. It's a different video altogether. But I'm rolling with the middle grip. So I'm gonna show you guys right now. Just flip it over. We're gonna unrack it. So as you see, there's no, there's no wobble, it's just very stable. And then from here, So due to the hand position, neutral grip, it feels like I'm doing that fly because I'm applying an isometric, isometric style of uh, tension to the bar. So I'm basically pressing my, pressing my hands in this way, in an isometric fashion, and this helps me recruit the chest better. You combine that with the angle on the bench and also the deeper range of motion. It's a great mass builder for the chest. So here I'm doing a quick demo of the Arch Nemesis Swiss Bar Bench. And like I mentioned before, if you don't have access to this bar, it's really not that serious. Even if you don't even know this bar, it's really not the end of the world. You can still get the job done with dumbbells. You can still get that deep range of motion. But what this has over the dumbbells, like I mentioned, is that you have a more stable base to press from. So you don't have the whole unilateral alternating aspect where you have to think about what both arms are doing. Both arms are doing the exact same thing at the same time when using this bar. So you don't have to worry about the stability factors. One less thing to worry about and that's why I personally like it. It's very shoulder friendly, and yeah, it's just a great exercise overall. And you combine that with the slight inclines and the slight declines, I could really feel this in my chest more than any kind of bench press. Okay, so let's talk about chest flies because I was never really a big fan of them, and the reason why is because the resistance profile on a chest fly is pretty garbage. You know, you grab the dumbbells, you go on a bench, you don't really know how low you should be going, and some people, they'll go to way too low where they hurt their shoulders. And once you get closer to the top and the dumbbell is vertical to the ground, perpendicular, you lose a lot of tension. So that's why a lot of people use cables, a lot of bodybuilders, stuff of that nature, because you get more of the constant, quote unquote, constant tension when you're training the chest fly. So if you don't have access to that, you could use bands. And I wanna give a huge shout out to Joe Bennett, hypertrophy coach. He gave me this tip where you basically take a half foam roller, just put it on the bench, and this is gonna give you a superior chest stretch in my opinion. 
So I don't have access to a full cable stack, so I'm basically just using bands. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how it works. I basically loop my bands in the rack, and depending on which area of the checks you wanna work, you could adjust it lower or higher. So as you can see, I got the handle here. Grab the other handle like so. This is good for like, you know, garage gym setups. And then from here, you're gonna keep, keep it close, right? And as you can see, I could already have a better chest stretch due to the half roller. I'm gonna start with pressing it up. And now I'm gonna reach a bit, get a little serratus. And I'm just gonna do the chest fly motion. Stop here. Get a great chest stretch right here. And now I'm just gonna squeeze the pecs. Go down, squeeze the pecs. I personally don't touch them. You can if you want, but I personally just have it lined up on my shoulder like I'm doing a neutral grip front raise. Like this, do 15 to 20 reps, like 10 to 20. And I actually like to throw in a mechanical drop set. So once I'm here and I can't do any more, I'll just get the most out of it, out of the movement by doing a little press. So like, like I'm doing a machine press, just to really finish it off. But this is a really great exercise for the pecs, for isolating them. And it takes the core out of it. Okay, so next is an exercise that I just rediscovered. And it's no surprise, but it's the weighted dip. And the reason why I like this exercise, especially done with the pause, is if you do the chest emphasized version. So I was always talking on this channel about, you know, chain dips, at least more this year and just dipping variations that are gonna target the triceps more, even though to a certain extent you're still gonna work your chest. But if you wanna just make it more quote unquote chest friendly, then the weighted dip done with the pause at the bottom is definitely a must have exercise. And this could be done maybe in the middle of your workout. It could even be done as a main lift if you want, but I personally do it near the end or of the middle of my routine. So as far as the execution is concerned, if you guys wanna do a more chest emphasized dip, if you look at the hand placement, if I want to be more triceps, I'm going to put go a bit closer. If I want to make it more chest, I'm going to go maybe like a, roughly a fist wider. So it's more like a wider bench, quote unquote. When I'm here, I'm not going to be super upright. I'm going to lean my torso forward a bit. And then from here, I'm just going to go down. Crazy chest stretch. Come back up. So you're going to see in the clip that I post that I'm not using a dip belt. The reason why is because my personal dip belt broke for whatever reason, but I was using a weight vest. But these could be done with a chain, you could use a dip belt, you could load it up however you want, but the point is you want to get stronger at the paused weighted dip. And these I like for volume. I'm not the biggest advocate of one rep max dips, although you can do them. I'm more in the range of like, you know, 10 reps, pause, three by 10. And that's basically how you emphasize the chest on a dip. So that basically wraps it up. Those are three things I've learned this year. The weighted dip is not necessarily something I just relearn. It's more something I just started reintroducing in my program and I'm liking it a lot. But as far as the first two tips, the chest flies and definitely getting a lot out of them because the improved resistance profile and also the arch nemesis bar, I'm using it a lot more. I'm getting a deeper stretch in my chest and I'm really enjoying the results. So if you guys want to have a full analysis of the Arch Nemesis bar, let me know in the comment section below. If you learn anything from this video, let me know. I really hope this helps with your chest development and I'll see you guys next episode.